Oh, Redbubble, how I love you. When I make a sale, it feels so good. But what if you aren't making sales? Well, I got an email from Mahadi, and Mahadi asks me about this store called Master Museum, 487 designs. And when I scroll on down to the bottom off of 487 designs, we have 788 favorited, which is not too shabby. Of course, we don't know if this is Mahadi's brother or significant other or their greatest fan. Hopefully there's a bunch of strangers favoriting this, but in this video, I'm gonna see if I can help this store. They write, I recently came across your YouTube channel where you shared your experience and success story on Redbubble. I've been struggling to generate sales and attract customers to my store. I've tried various strategies, but I'm still not getting the results I'm looking for. That's why I'm reaching out. I would be honored if you could take a few minutes to review my store and provide some valuable feedback and tips. Absolutely, I'm happy to. So let me jump in here in this video with three big picture tips on how you can elevate this store to the next level and give yourself a fighting chance to make some sales. Okay, so look, at the end of the day, there's really three things that make your store successful and like this is it. So if anybody ever tries to sell you a course or charge big bucks for some big master class, I'm gonna tell you right now what the secret is. It's a whole bunch of quantity, it's a whole bunch of quality, and it's a whole bunch of getting in the right niches. That's it, that's all print on demand is. So if you're not doing something correctly, you either don't have enough products, you don't have a good enough quality, or you're in crappy niches. That's it, okay, end of story. So let's take a look now at this store, and some of my advice is gonna be kinda of rinky dinky, it's gonna be a little tiny like tweak here or tweak there, it's not gonna maybe be earth shattering, but we can give it a try. My first tip is the store banner here. We've got Master Museum 487 Designs, joined November of 2022. This banner to me is kind of meaningless, I'm just acting as a customer right now, I don't understand what new arrival 25% off means, I'm not seeing that on any of the other stores, so I'm not sure if this is a Redbubble thing, that there's some sort of coupon code. I don't know what to do with this information as a client. So what I would rather you do is have a banner that looks kind of like this. This is a completely different store. This is Michelle Draws, and we can see here there's pictures of uh, items with their designs on it. Here's a nice big thumbnail over on the right-hand side, and there's the artist's name, and there's even an Etsy store as well. I'm not saying you have to have an Etsy store, but they've got some sort of draw in here as a client. I'm looking at this getting excited about their designs, getting excited about their products. This is an awesome store banner. So if you're looking to you know level up your store, I would get your audience excited about the store. I would change out this banner. Tip number two, let's take a look down here on the left-hand side of the categories. Now remember, you've got 487 designs total in your store. How many collections do we have here on the left-hand side? It goes on and on and on. We've got over 20 categories. Now when we look at these categories, is there any common denominator? National Park, Vintage, Autism, Earth Day, Pi Day, Penguin Lover, Baseball, they're all different. And the risk you run with having this many categories with so few designs is that your store winds up not being brandable. There's no brand of your store. If someone were to ask me, hey Zen, what is Master Museum store? I, I don't know. They're not really doing Women's Days, they're not doing Black History, they're not doing Vintage Patterns, it's a whole lot of everything which sometimes comes down to a whole lot of nothing. So what I would recommend is take a look at your top five designs right here at the top. So I'm searching this, I'm shopping products, and I've got most relevant selected. These are the top five designs that come back. They're all different. That's a, that's a problem. We've got Great Basin National Park, Fasting Mode, I Love My Boyfriend, 100 Days of School, and then a Vintage Pattern. They're not even close to being the same. So what I would recommend is pick one of these designs and make way more of them. So for example, here we have Great Basin National Park and I can see here we've got Gates of the Arctic National Park and they're very similar. So what I would do is I would make like 100 designs all with this one, one background. Pick every single national park and make a make a t-shirt. Yosemite National Park. Uh, you know, I live in Canada, so I mean, I've got you know, Banff and Jasper National Park. Like I, you know, you could make all sorts of different designs and that what you can do then is have a collection of say 100 of these sitting over on the left. So that's that's what I would do next. I would make 100 of these designs. You're just scaling them up. It's the exact same picture and different locations. Because look, me for example, I don't care about Great Basin National Park. I don't even know where that is. I mean, it says here Retro Sunset Nevada, but I don't live in Nevada, so I don't really care about this. 
But if you said, for example, something in Canada, I'd be like, oh, I've been there. I live there. I can relate. So you can scale up. But don't scale up on all of them. Pick one and make a hundred in that collection. Go to the next one. It says fasting mode. Okay, are there other types of designs you can make here? We've got fasting mode on. Are there, is there other types of modes? You know, gaming mode on, dating mode on, hunky man mode on, mustache mode on, whatever it is. You can have all sorts of different things. It's the look and the feel of design of the design that'll draw someone in. Okay, you make a hundred of these. They're going to look really niche, but what'll happen is one of two things will happen. Either someone will buy this because it'll be so niche that it'll, talk, that it'll speak to them, or they'll reach out to you and say, hey, can you make me an X whatever mode design? I really like sailing. Can you make sailing mode? You'll start branding your store. Down at the bottom, you've got, if you don't see exactly what you're looking for, don't hesitate to send me a bubble mail. What I would do is I would put this information, I would put it right at the top. I do custom work nice big letters, your email address. And then that way somebody sees it instantly and goes, oh, they do custom work. This is fantastic. Let me reach out to them. So that's my little bonus tip for you as well. These are not earth shattering tips, but if you do all of this, it'll at least give you a fighting chance. What I've noticed is that when your design count gets to about a thousand, things start happening. You start getting enough momentum that enough designs are hitting the algorithm that people start searching. When, I, when my shops get up to a thousand designs, they start getting likes and purchases faster at a faster rate. You're already ahead of the curve here. You've got 487 designs. You're better than one-to-one -one ratio at 788 favorited. Again, sometimes I find out, oh, my mom favorited all these designs. Well, okay, assuming these are legit, you're you know off to the races here and you're doing a good job of getting more favorites than your design. So get up to a thousand designs and you'll start making some consistent sales if you can brand your store because you've got this really cool retro sunset. Make 100 of those and see what happens. I'd love to hear your comments. I'd love to hear your questions. There's always different things we can do in these Redbubble shops. Here's another video on how you can supercharge your Redbubble journey.